Welcome to It's Biblical again. Today is November 9th and 2023 when we've been covering the events in Israel and how to us it is likely now that the original 2023 prediction of either the return of Christ or the Gog and Magog war which leads to the first resurrection or what people call I guess the rapture but it just seems like to, appears to me to be just the first resurrection would happen and in order for this to happen we thought that we need to have a full-on Islamic invasion of Israel and I thought that was unlikely until October 7th when you know the uh, Hamas attacked Israel and uh, it was a big massacre 1400 uh, Israelis killed 300 soldiers um, people were enslaved there was um, 260 or 240 uh, hostages taken, and some, like only a handful, have been released, maybe four uh, to date, but they've been taken as leverage. And uh, since then, the whole world has somewhat turned on Israel because of their bomb bombing campaigns, and currently they're also pushing in on the ground operation. They've cut this city in half and are fighting. Um, the house to house here and bombing and various hospitals are being bombed and it's actually getting a little hard to follow but since that happened basically you've also been having much of the Islamic world populations pushing for their governments to do something on behalf of the Palestinians in the area and obviously you have um, direct financing for the Hamas group which is likely in my opinion because I think I believe both Turkey Erdogan and Turkey and uh, Hamas have something to do with the Muslim Brotherhood. But also, I think now, in conjunction with Iran and obviously Turkey and probably some other players, they probably wanted this to happen for Israel to overreact so that they could come and be their mediators or actually come and actually have a full war with Israel to finally take it over and thus fulfilling the Ezekiel 38 prophecy of Gog of Magog on time when we expect which was that 2023 this would happen and the way we got there was by believing potentially that the dome of the rock on the temple mount was actually the abomination of desolation that christ said to look for when concerning the end times when you'd have this great tribulation and daniel if you go in there there's a few numbers that uh indicate um that you should look for the you know, the setting up of the Dome of the Rock basically on the holy place, on the Temple Mount, and then you would have a time of great tribulation, and it tells you how long basically it would last. And, uh, but we'll just, uh, basically Daniel says, you know, when is when will all these things take place? When, and he says, you know, the angel says, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, basically persecuted. The wicked shall do wickedly, but none of the wicked shall understand, only the wise. It says, from the time that daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, that should be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 uh, days. Now, this first number here, the 1,290, um, I guess there's a few ways to do it, but uh, um, you could add, for me, I thought it had to be like you add 1,290 and you get 1978 when Camp David Accords were signed or whatever with Israel, and or at least they were started with Israel and Egypt, but that's not 100% likely. But I know, according to um, Wikipedia, which is the first number I saw and the other people saw, is that the Dome of the Rock began its construction in 688, as it says right here. It's completed in either 691 or 692 or something. But the... Um, you know, Al Sayyid says, this guy here says that it commenced my year with 688, and that was the first number I found. And the reason I believe it is because Revelation gives us numbers about how long the woman Israel will be in the wilderness for, and how I take that is once the abomination of desolation is set up, you know, there's a time of great persecution and also a um, uh, desolation, meaning no Jews in the land, and include, it add, includes the two prophets, which I believe is the church in Israel. And they're kind of in mourning for 1,260 days because the you know the outer courts be given to the Gentiles or whatever, and for the trample it under the feet, which connects to the Temple Mount. So you just uh, 688 
Dome of the Rock set up at 1,260, and we just convert it to years in this case, and you get 1948. So all that Great Tribulation, I guess, is fulfilled in this time period. It, obviously, it continues, but the uh, what they call the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled by this coming about. And Daniel gives us another number, um, which is the 1,335 days. And that's, blesses he who waits and comes to 1,335 days. Go you into the end of rest and arise in your inheritance at the end of days, which seems to me to indicate the resurrection. So all you have to do is when was the abomination desolation oops, set up? 688 plus 1,335 equals 2023, when you would have to have the Ezekiel 38 invasion happen. And what that means with the Dome of the Rock being um, the abomination of desolation is that the Islamic system is the Antichrist system in the name of a man. And it developed over time and it's had many rulers. And you wouldn't call them all like, they're all, I guess, Antichrists in a way, because John says there's many, but they deny the Son. This religion is this basically the supremacist faith that is... Um, you know, we're set to replace Judaism and Christianity, but it's basically like a super law that does subjugate people and cause people to murder um, in the way you saw on um, on that October 7th attack, which is way more brutal than people are saying, but because they, you know, they see the bombings of the Palestinians and they seem to want to ignore this attack at this moment because of all the history of what Israel has done to the Palestinians in what they call an open-air prison. But any nation would respond to an attack like this. This is an Arab Israeli who was accosted by these guys when they came across. He's asking where is Rim, which is a, one of the kibbutzes that they came in and killed people in. He's threatening this guy to slit his throat if he doesn't tell him. And these, you know, these guys aren't the nicest. Um, you know, it wasn't the most uh, peaceful operation. But uh, so I wouldn't want to be a part of, you know, erasing that. <laughs> but uh, and it's very interesting if you look on the news about how people. There's a big uh, bunch of uh, beat the F and Jew UCLA students, beat the uh, Netanyahu um, pinata. Um, Master Bra outside Gadot's Hamas screen, so she's Gal Gadot, Israeli actress, Wonder Woman, screened the, this 47-minute video, which shows the horrific side of this massacre, including, from what I hear, a family being blown up by a grenade with kids and stuff, and babies being shot in the head and whatnot. But there was a big fight out there, so this whole anti-Semitism thing is flaring up all over the world, and people are getting angry on all sides. So we have this going on at the time when you'd expect in 2023 and we have the exact alignment we'd be looking for. So basically with Islam being the Antichrist faith, everything has been fulfilled for the most part. The Great Tribulation, we're basically at the tail end of it um, now in 2023 when we'd expect to see this invasion, this final invasion from Gog of Magog, which is Turkey as you've seen in the rest of the videos. So in league with Iran, which is a unique um, circumstance, which they've not been in league as they are today, which I believe, if all this is true, it does seem likely that um, Iran and Turkey, probably others, are in cahoots or whatever you say, to cause this Gaza thing to have Israel from the world's perspective overreact to have their populations call them to come because they do plan on actually um, coming and uh, trying to save the Gazans or the um, Palestinians and uh, actually do something and the reason I think it's possible is because how Erdogan is talking um, you know he, he went as far as to say you know the um, Hamas terrorists are actually what he called them, they're not a terrorist organization, but a group of Mujahideen freedom fighters. And he's g gonna do a global initiative and also call Israel a war criminal. And he's talking like, um, I believe I have a video of it uh, somewhere here, but he was talking 
Yeah, like you're right. He said. So he's talking about remember the Charlie Hebdo attack, which was an attack on people who made fun of the Prophet Muhammad in France a couple years ago. And there's 25 killed there, and he says they were killed. 25 were killed, and world leaders walked in solidarity with Paris. But 11,000 civilians, including children, are killed in Gaza, and the world remains silent. The United States and the West are silent. Women and children are being killed. We watch these on TV every day. Now, this is the Islamic Cooperation, Economic Cooperation Organization here, so they're Islamic. And he's basically saying, if, as Muslims, if we do not raise our voice today, um, what? who are we, basically? You know, what will we be? So if now, if you want to do something about, you know, Gaza, if your desire is to be the leader of the Islamic world and re revitalize the Ottoman Empire, it seems like now would be the time to do it. And you happen to be doing it in league with Iran at this point, who seems to be... Um, supporting all these proxy groups that are uh, fighting now the U.S. This whole thing kind of spiraled out of control from this uh, fighting in Gaza. Now all these terrorist groups, especially the Iranian-backed ones, are declaring war on Israel. The Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen have been launching missiles after they declared war on Israel up the Red Sea or over Saudi Arabia towards Israel and there was one day where the US intercepted a bunch of them their missiles and drones and then and on a ship here called the Canary but they've been keep shooting them and Saudi Arabia has been shooting them down and Jordan has been shooting them down but it seems like today some of them have been actually getting through and there was an Israeli town which is currently uh, Elliot or Elat I'm not sure how to say it has been actually getting hit a little bit by some of these things so this is happening while all the U.S. bases, it was up to like 40 attacks on U.S. bases recently up in um, Syria and Iraq, uh, including this that just showed up on Twitter, but I don't know if this old video, but they're saying that suicide drones are attacking the U.S. base in Al-Harir in Erbil, Iraq. Iranian proxies are attacking four times today, so that number of 40 attacks is way up. But you have some interesting things that make this Ezekiel 38 event pretty likely there's also uh, the end of daniel 11 which i believe is basically talking about this same event but you have basically you have saudi arabia which before this whole event was about to make peace with israel which may have been one of the reasons iran and turkey wanted to launch this was to uh stop that from happening which would kind of fit the bible where they said peace and safety but sudden destruction came which maybe they said peace and safety because uh, um, Israel has been having some, uh, you know, um, peace with Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, and then it was going to be Saudi Arabia. But now it seems to be in jeopardy. But it sounds like Saudi Arabia is not really pro-Hamas. And they also, some of these other uh, Arab states are not really pro um, that either, Hamas either. But they have, they're kind of a situation where they believe seems like they fear Iran and Turkey and this allegiance. So that's why they're one of the reasons they're trying to maybe promote something with Israel here. But uh, I mean, even I think yesterday or the day before the Yemenis, uh, the Houthis, they shot down a like a $30 million U.S. drone. Uh, so this stuff is just kind of out of control right now. But you have this Saudi Arabia and Jordan are shooting down the Houthis missiles as well. And they, I think Jordan shot down some of the Iraqi missiles that were launched at some of the proxy groups, missiles that were launched at Israel. So Jordan and uh, Saudi Arabia are both mentioned in the prophecies uh, as kind of staying out of it. But also Saudi Arabia might also have something to do, at least with some aspect of Mystery Babylon, which I believe is destroyed by Iran or if not, maybe it's just Mecca, which, you know, is the kind of the home of this faith that caused all this um, destruction, you know, the, this ideology that had created a basic anti-Semitic ideology that wants to seek and destroy Israel. Uh, but we'll get into just, um, just to, I'll go over Ezekiel 38 invasion, what, we'd be look, what we would expect if 2023 was the actual... Um, 
year that this all would take place and now what we have like 50 days left i mean the chances of it happening are slim in this time period yet everything is moving so fast and the players are in place that it seems actually like this might just be a sudden invasion looks real bad real quick and then um it goes jesus comes and you know ten thousand of his holy ones with him us obviously in the first resurrection the rule and reign and teach the world again i suppose what we should have known all along and i'll i'll link the destruction of the false prophet and um the beat the final beast with the destruction of gog and Magog because i believe they're the same event and i'll show you that right now as well as kind of going over how this is actually what we're looking at today in 2023 when we'd expect the actual lineup of this particularly ezekiel 38 prophecy but also the Daniel 11. So I'm, I've been going over this a few times, but um, Ezekiel 38. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, so a leader title of some kind, of the land of Magog, Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. Okay, Ra Meshach and Tubal is for sure um, Turkey. So Rosh and Magog is debated to be Russia, but it seems like since... Gog is a leader of these Turkish areas, then it's likely that these are Turkish. So this is a Turkish leader currently. That, that's the regions these would be. He says, Prophet against him. Behold, I am against you, Gog, prince of these places, Rosh Meshachatubal. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws and lead you out, all your armies and horsemen, splendidly colored, great company of bucklers and shields. So he probably saw this, but it is parabolically, obviously, it means warfare and army. Obviously, a modern army wouldn't have horses, but we know that in the future, that's what we have. But also, who's with them? You have Persia, which is Iran. You have Ethiopia, which is apparently related to northern Sudan, or but it's not hard to believe. Maybe it's just malicious from that region. And then Libya, which is also currently, at least the government portion, allied with um, Turkey. So the Libyans... And that's kind of significant, too, to kind of quell the idea of Russia being Gog because there's some different interests between Russia and Turkey, especially in Libya. Russians support Haftar, which is fighting the Lebanese government. That's in Tripoli or whatever. But Turkey is supporting Tripoli. So I guess Libyans support, uh, Northern Sudanese support, in conjunction with Iran and Turkey coming down Okay, because hooks have been put in their jaws to come down now. That could indicate that they knew about this whole thing that was going to happen in Gaza, and they're using it to just kind of come down and finally destroy Israel and take over, and for Turkey's purpose, revitalize the Ottoman Empire. Or they did they did it not expect this 100%, and the hooks have been put in their jaws, and now as, now they see that it's time for them to come down because... The world is begging for them to do so. And with how Erdogan was talking here, he's basically saying that who would we be if we did nothing? Meanwhile, the West is supporting Israel, but we have all these Arab states. So basically, they're worried that they would be toppled by their people if they did nothing. But I believe Erdogan is one of the most cunning leaders that the world has ever seen and patient. And I, there's this guy, Douglas McGregor, who's been saying, been saying we should actually listen to the threats of Erdogan because if you've seen the previous video I did, Erdogan is, Ga you know, basically Gog and Magog. Um, you saw that they had that big rally right before the whole celebration of the 100-year anniversary of Turkey where it basically called for Turkish troops to Gaza. The whole crowd was pleading. Now, I don't think that was random. I think maybe there, there was some reason that they were all chanting that. So I think this guy has it in his mind to come down with Iran and all these proxies and everything to come and fight. Now, so we have that. That's And it also says who, with them is also Gomer, which is Turkey, and Togomora from the far north. So this links it to the idea of the the north, the far north being actually Turkey because it's these Gomer and Togomora are in Turkey. So north of Israel, this is the far north of Israel. People go further and say it's Russia, but there's various other reasons why I don't think it would be. Even if Russia was somehow involved funding weapons and stuff, it doesn't fulfill this is this person who has actual reason to come down because of for the sake of Islam, which we'll get into how it once the beast is destroyed and the false prophet somehow also 
the Gog is destroyed. So it must just be the final Islamic leader who represents this this faith, this false thing that came about to persecute, you know, the Jews and Christians that led to the, the time of desolation and tribulation was the actual, once he's destroyed, the spiritual nature of this whole thing is destroyed because how in the world is this whole faith, if it's a false faith and false thing, going to be, you know, ended? If not, then how are they going to even believe there's a real God unless there's some type of physical event, which I believe is obviously the second coming in Revelation? How could it happen unless he does it in, you know, just like it is in Ezekiel 38, which would be, hey, I'm the God of Israel. That's in the Israeli. He forgives them and then shows the world who, you know, he's the, he was always this one. And it was also Jesus all along for the Jews. So he says, prepare yourself, be ready to Gog. You and your companies are gathered by you and be a guard for them for after many days you'll be visited in the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gather for many people on the mountains of israel which had long been desolate so this israel that gog comes again against is the one that has previously been desolate and been you know attacked with the sword and gathered from the world so they're no longer desolate so they were brought back out of the nations. And when did that happen? Well, it's 1948. So the desolation started in 688 with the setting up of Dome of the Rock. You add that the woman in the wilderness and the two prophets prophesying in sackcloth for 260 years, and you get 1948. Okay, so they're no longer desolate. So this, this it's talking about this particular Israel, this modern state of Israel. And they dwell safely. Um... You know, they were brought out of the nations, and then you come like a storm, like a cloud, you and all your troops with you, okay? On that day, he shall pass into your mind. You have an evil plan, so that's why I think, you know, Turkey, in conjunction with Iran, planned this whole thing for Israel to overreact. Maybe not overreact, but react in such a way to force, you know, this whole scenario where they would be called upon by their people to come. So it's unwalled villages. I will go to the peaceful people who dwell safely, and all of them dwell in without walls. Now, Israel has walls and stuff, but, I mean, compared, I mean, this might have some spiritual connotations, but, you know, that could, you know, they were caught off guard. I mean, the walls were just fences that were usually blown up, having neither bars nor gates. So, basically, they were caught off guard, you know, and maybe they'll be caught off guard by this, too. So, they take plunder and booty and stretch out the hand and waste places that, get, that are again inhabited. So, Israel's again inhabited by the people of is, you know, the actual Jews. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish and their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty and carry away gold? So it's this, I've heard that this is like the Arab Emirate states or like Saudi Arabia saying this to Gog, like in Iran, like what are you guys doing? And that kind of makes sense with this whole scenario we're seeing now because you have, you know, Saudi Arabia shooting down the Houthi missiles that are Iranian backed and they've been in a war with the Houthis down here for this long. You have Qatar, Bahrain and stuff, you know, uh, uh, some of these Arab states kind of sticking out of this. They have to say things, but, and then you also have Jordan, which is uh, kind of shooting down other things. So you have this situation where Saudi Arabia is in a position to kind of call out um, this attack that when it comes because they're like, well, what are you guys trying to do? Just kill everyone? So apparently it's going to be a very horrific event, kind of like October 7th, but I guess on steroids because you'd actually have nation states involved with serious armies. But this could be a very quick thing because obviously you have, if this is in the next two months, you have U U.S. ships and stuff here um, that could fight and you would obviously turn a lot of people against you if you just came down and pulled the October 7th attack on a big scale that nobody could deny was basically horrendous slaughter and then obviously Christ comes um, so we have that and so he bring he comes down and the reason um, I think it's this Israel for sure is cause, I mean there's a, something with Romans um, 11 where it says they're basically come in unbelief but Israel is I believe in unbelief when Christ comes to, to them but he forgives them therefore I uh, bring you back the captives of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel. I be jealous for my holy name after they have borne their shame and their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me. When they dwelt in their own land, safely in their land, no one made them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' hands, I am hollowed in them and their sight in nations. 
Then they will know that I am their Lord and their God who sent them into captivity amongst the nations. So this was all in God's ordained fashion. But he also brought them back in 1948, which was actually, um, uh, you know, fulfilled. And he says, I will not hide my face from them anymore. And I think, uh, I believe Romans 11 says that he did hide, he hid their face from them for a time, for the time of the Gentiles, until he didn't. So basically this Israel today will continue. It's not going to go away. They're not going to lose um, because Jesus actually is going to come back in the first resurrection and the meek are going to inherit the earth. But also the interesting thing here is, is it talks about the burial of Gog. When Gog is destroyed, it talks about, you know, this big earthquake and all these things. Um, when they come down, they will call the valley of Haman Gog for seven months. Okay. And they're, you know, burying these uh, things, burying all the weapons from the war. But I think it goes on. It, um, let me see. There's a part here where it mentions um, how there will be a great feast of mighty men basically on Gog, and um, let me see, you should fall in the open field, the cities, for, okay, let me see where that was, he basically calls it the great feast, you know, and um, basically a great sword against um, Gog, and surely in that day there should be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, okay, um, where was, it? well, I'm sorry for, for kind of being unprepared, but there's a feast on mighty men in, um, which is also, it's in the uh, Gog story here, gathered together. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's obvious. This right here. Assemble yourselves, gather for my sacrificial meal, which I am sanctifying to you. Great sacrificial meal on the mountains of Israel. You eat and drink blood, flesh of mighty men, prince of the earth. Okay. It has this here, but also that is also in Revelation 19 at the destruction of the false prophet and of the beast, which must be, beast I believe is the final Islamic empire and the false prophet is the religion of Islam. If the two prophets are Christianity and Judaism or Israel and the church, then it would be Islam, the false prophet. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth gathered together against him who is in, you know, in the sky and stretch out a sword and throws them but these two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So Islam and the empire is destroyed. But uh, in that, it also says to the at this time, come and gather together for this great supper of the God, as we saw in Ezekiel thirty-eight, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and flesh of mighty men, horses. Okay, so that same event here is also the Ezekiel. So when Gog is destroyed, so too is the false religion, the false beast system, which must have been Islam. So that Ezekiel 30, destruction of Gog is also the destruction of this. So it is connected to Islam and likely the Daniel prophecy about the days is true and it was all this time the Dome of the Rock, which is sitting on the Temple Mount. So now we're at the 1,335 days, boom, when we have this alignment of nations. Persia in league with Iran, and obviously Turkey, sorry, T Persia is Iran. Iran in league with Turkey, also Libya following them some way, and Sudan. And if you go to um, Daniel, there's a little more. Daniel 11 has a little bit more about the time of the end, which we've seen in other videos, but it basically says the northern king, which we learned in Ezekiel, the far north was Turkey, comes against the glorious land, but... Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Oman. So Jordan escapes because they are kind of a neutral player right now. And Egypt is attacked and taken. Okay, so he gains Egypt, but it says also the Libyans and Ethiopians, which is, uh, you know, northern uh, Sudan. The Libyans again is here, so it's the same thing. And news troubles him from the east and the north, which could be China and maybe Iran or maybe other players that go against Turkey and stuff at this final thing, but nobody helps him because uh, it's the time of the end. So again, it's the Ezekiel 38 thing when, you know, it's basically the same event just said in a, a little slightly more information or less information here. So, but we, again, we have Jordan kind of staying out of it. And then Saudi Arabia wasn't mentioned there, or these Arab states, but 
we'll get into that in a minute. But yeah, this scenario, 2023, seems all of a sudden really likely, especially with Erdogan basically saying, if we don't do nothing now, who are we, you know? But also his other statements that you've seen in the previous videos. So the world is, it's getting hard to follow. I've probably been all over the place, but basically this alignment seems highly likely. It seems like the players are in place, the right kind of leaders, the right kind of personalities for this to take place today. And there's this other side idea that the um, Mecca, basically, the false religion, is related to the Mystery Babylon. There might be more at play spiritually, like other systems that are in play with that, since, you know, by rejecting the mercy of Christ, you know, the church doing that maybe led to this God judging both Israel and the church through Islam itself by kind of saying, hey, you guys want, you want to follow the, the law that, you know, the way of death, then here's this horrible thing, you know, that Satan, you know, he allowed it to happen so he could fulfill this purpose. But, you know, and it talks about um, Great Babylon, that she's a city, but it mentions how she, she says, she sits as queen and I am a widow and no one see me, but plagues come on her in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she's burned with fire. Okay, so, and all the nations are, you know, wailing and sad that this great city has fallen. But there's some interesting things in other books of the Bible where it seems like it's talking about this mystery Babylon as well. And it usually refers to it as Babylon, like it talks about in uh, Isaiah 21, you know, the, the burden against the wilderness of the sea. So obviously Mecca is, you know, located on the sea in the wilderness. I mean, this is just a possibility here. And But we know it's connected, but it also mentions here, go up, O Elam. And besiege O Media. So it sounds like because these two regions are also today modern Iran, Media, and Elam. So it's Iran basically saying you guys see, you know, basically do this thing, which is the uh, destruction in one day. And it also mentions here Babylon is fallen, is fallen, which is what you also see in Revelation 19 about this great city, Babylon, is the greatest fallen, is fallen. It mentions it the same, but it says Iran does this. Okay, about this great city. But there's also, I think it's Isaiah 47 as well, that says, that talks about, um, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground without, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Which is, we'll, I'll come back to a minute, but say the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, his name of Israel. But it mentions that this is the this lady that they're coming to destroy, this Babylon, is the Lady of Kingdoms, the daughter of the Chaldeans. And on the elder, she laid a heavy lo yoke on people, which is the burden of Islam, maybe. And you said, I shall be a lady forever, just like it said in Revelation 18. So it's connected. So that you did not take things to heart and remember the latter end of them. So you didn't remember that you destroyed in the end, basically. Uh, so you dwell safely, loss of, you'll experience a loss of children in a moment, in one day. And I believe it talks about how it'll be a fire, you know, um, and no one will save you. It, it, it'll show you uh, the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be worn by, it, nor to sit before. Now people have, you know, suggested that this is like some type of nuclear attack. And if you can join... The fact that Persia does this in 21 and she's killed in an instant in Revelation 18, then it's not hard to see with I, with Iran's hatred of Saudi Arabia that perhaps the nuke thing that people are worried about is some type of attack directly on the holy city of Mecca that would cause people to will. But, th I mean, this is just a theory that is connected to the nations. And the reason it's interesting that it mentions the daughter of Chaldea goes to this other th theory, which is that Islam actually started in the north here. It was what well, we eventually became the Umayyad dynasty, but it came north of, or maybe in the Jerusalem up into this region was where Islam really started, but it was much different and more brutal than the historical account. But there was a Abbasid revolution, which is in this region later, like a hundred years later, where they took over Islam, you know, and that's like the, when they call that the glory days of Islam. And this is when you started to get the Quran and all the Hadiths to come together and build the faith like 200 years later. And this happens to be the Chaldean area. So the Chaldeans developed the Islamic faith and also changed its origins from being primarily focused up here in the north Syria, but also 
focused towards Jerusalem to be focused towards the south in Mecca. So basically creating the line sign of wonder for this city. So this would fit the idea of it being the daughter of the Chaldeans because it's essentially the Abbasid dynasty is essentially headquartered in the Chaldean area. But anyways, that's just some other part to see because it does seem like Saudi Arabia still desires to have peace with Israel. And the reason from what I've heard from experts and stuff is because of their fear of Iran because they've been fighting it out in Yemen and been, you know, there's been hostility there. Also the Sunni Shia, Sunni, uh, Shia Islam versus Sunni Islam idea. But it seems hard to believe that they would nuke this holy site, but it does seem like a city is destroyed in one day. Now there's other ideas about that being a spiritual destruction when, but it's also highly, basically since I, I thought that too, but now it's seeming like everything is about this actual ev end times event here. So keep that in mind as well with all this nations and how Saudi Arabia is playing out and basically saying, what are you guys doing? Kind of condemning Hamas here and there, even though it's hard for them because of the Islamic, you know, view of Hamas as freedom fighters. Not everybody in Islam thinks that, but especially with all the horrific atrocity we've seen. But you do see this all of a sudden Israel was attacked, horrific attack. And I'm sure if we get that final video that Gil Gadot um, that led to the fights at that Holocaust Museum where Gal Gadot screened that 47-minute video, I'm sure you'll see that this was not a peaceful event. From what we've already seen, people getting their heads cut off with garden hose and the 260 people that were killed at that music festival. We know that the further videos will be even worse. And there was a bloodlust, and now the Israel's bombing this. It has turned the world to, say, to kind of an insane anti-Semitism that is just all of a sudden, boom, out of nowhere. I guess it's been brewing for a long time. Not just in the Middle East, but all over the world, including the United States, where there's people already kind of getting killed at these events. I think an old man was killed the other day when they said, you know, basically Hitler should have finished the job. And then after that, the guy made, must have got mad and then was hit and died when he hit his head hit the cement. But a bunch of, basically, it seems like all of a sudden, Everybody thinks they're justified in hating not only Israel, but the Jews worldwide because of Israel. And they're in league. All those you know liberal organizations that are pro-transgender and all this stuff, uh, somehow all that stuff, their, their focus became all about Palestine and basically promoting this idea from the river to the sea, which is from this river. Was it, was it the Euphrates, I believe? Is that what, which one is? I don't know. Whatever river. Sorry, I should know this, but from the river to the sea is basically a call for the eradication of Israel from this region by whatever means. Okay, so this is the lineup. This is the event. This is the year. Now, could this happen in this quick of a time? I think it's possible, but we'll see. Because if Turkey's going to do something, they better do it now. They'd have to get safe passage through Syria. Unless Syria agrees to have the Turkey come and you know t take out the Americans here, but that would be a whole other problem. If they did it, they have to be fast because they would they would probably cause the West to actually try to come and do something. And then, but in doing this and looking like they're going to go save people, they're going to cause a lot of destruction. And this is going to anger God to finally say enough of this, enough of the beast system, enough of that. I'm coming and I'm going to show the Israelis that I am their Messiah. I'm going to forgive them, and I'm going to show the world that I am the creator of the world and the one, the God of Israel. And it's against this Israel that he comes, this this one that came back from desolation, from the sword that is gathered in this land. Basically, and they don't believe in the Messiah yet, but he's going to come and forgive them. And this is the one, this is the time. So I would not speak against, I would say things against Israel's tactics, but I would not, You you have to see where this is going. And this is definitely looks like it could be the end. I don't know if it's exactly 2023, but it is amazing that this is what we're looking at in 2023 uh, from how those numbers line up. And it's not really hyperbole or looking at a moon or this or that, which might also have some, you know, there's probably things going on in the celestial realm that is also pointing to this, but just from the numbers and history and everything that's going on, this seems extremely likely. So I'll try to keep you updated. It's getting really hard to keep up with all this stuff, but 
Uh, I hope that helps. Maybe it broadens the something maybe you never heard before, but it's something to consider how realistic this all is in a specific year that it seemed to be predicting. Uh, and if you see the previous videos, you see how that the idea of going from years or days to prophetic days or years really lines up with a lot of other stuff with Israel that is basically undeniable. So appreciate your time and I'll see you next time.